Hey, you kid. Come here. Come here. Want to try a mod? I promise. You won't get addicted. Just try it. It's not like you'll expect it in every single game you ever play ever again. Come on. Come on. If you don't like it, you can uninstall it. Come on, kid. Come on, come on. So this is how you install some mods in Stationeers. Now, the reason I say some mods is because some mods will work just um, normally, just naturally. And that's because they use uh, XML files. And let's get, let's show some XML files here. So if we go to Browse Local, uh, Data, Streaming Assets, yeah, Data, here. These are the XML files. So all of this shit, shit controls and um, uh, it sets things like recipes. So this is the electronics printer. I'm not going to click on it because I have no idea what's in my uh, note. Uh, my notebook plus right now so i'm not uh, i'm not uh, clicking on that <clears throat> and so forth uh, but some games some mods require something special code injection and what code injection is without getting too complicated is it's just taking something um, that you've wrote it that you, that someone else has wrote written on a programmatic level, a program level, that tells the game to do something it wasn't designed to do. Like, let's say, um, make atmosphere a little more realistic. This is my favorite mod, so I'm going to show um, how to install it, uh, this mod, by Elmo. All of Elmo's mods uses, uses the exact same code injector, which is... Um, um, El Roy, El, Air Doy's, whatever the hell his name is, uh, Stationer's add-on. So we're going to click on the Stationer's add-on here, and it's going to bring up uh, Firefox. And if it doesn't bring up Firefox, then there's something severely wrong with your uh, computer, and you should immediately bring it to a uh, um, a repair shop. So... Uh, it's good practice to read through stuff, but I never do good practice, and I just look for anything that says uh, releases, download, install, whatever, because I'm impatient, and impatience is the game, the um, the name of the game here. So that should be downloaded now. All right, well, we're going to minimize this, and we will then extract. The uh, the RAR here, or is it a RAR or is it a zip? It's a zip. So we'll extract the zip, and then we get the add-on manager here. Now, in the case of this um, particular add-on injector, whatever you want to call it, you just go to your root directory, which you can do by going stationers, manage, um, browse local files, and that'll bring up this here, and I'm pretty sure you put this in the local directory. Uh, this is where we go back to read, because you have to read. Yeah, so it's the game folder, root folder, whatever, which is this folder here. So we'll take all the contents of this folder and move it or copy it or whatever you want to do into this folder. So you should have uh, version.dil um, in the same directory as uh, rock, rocketstation.exe. And then these are every the, oh, these are all the files that are required for um, the uh, add-on to function properly. Um, Harmony, I believe, is something that's used for a lot of... Uh, a lot of games. I think RimWorld uses Harmony. It could just be a naming um, coincidence. My brain stalled there. Hopefully I cut out that uh, that uh, really long time where I sat there staring at the ceiling trying to remember the word coincidence. But uh, it could just be a naming coincidence. It may not be. You don't need to know any of this stuff. You don't need to play with any of this stuff. This will automatically load because the game will latch on to version.dil, I believe, and load that into the game, and that will allow the uh, other mods to inject themselves. So, 
Uh, now we want to subscribe to uh, Realism Overhaul. There we go. And then we will go back and we will launch the game. And hopefully it'll launch correctly. Okay, so now that the game is loaded, uh, you will see up here in a very shadowy thing, it says stationary add-on, then the version number, loaded, zero plugins. And then we will go to workshop here, and we will see that uh, the atmospheric workshop is there. <clears throat> I'm not sure if that's supposed to load in first, but uh, just to be safe, I'm going to exit and I'm going to uh, reload um, just to see if that loads. Let's see all the... Ooh, nice errors here. Oh yeah, atmospheric uh, add-ons may not work. And this is a telltale sign that all, all of these, uh, all of this red stuff here is a telltale sign that it ain't working. So it's good to first look up here. You see zero plugins loaded. Look in here and we can see that it's just not working. That could be my fault. So to make sure that it's not my fault, I'm going to exit and I'm going to reload and see if that fixes it. Because it's, it might be that it needs a, an initial load to change some files. And I'm just going to make sure. Uh, now we've reloaded and we see zero plugins loaded again. And um, there is... Um, still a lot of errors and it says it can't compile uh, that workshop number. Now if we are to go back to Steam, go back here, and it doesn't show me the workshop number, but if you were in Firefox or something um, you would see um, a string of numbers here that would match um, these numbers here and that's a way to make sure that it's absolutely that. But we only have one add-in plugged in. So Let's see if there's something wrong with this um, with this mod, which we should have done before we did this, but again, we're impatient. So if we go down to the bottom here, um, it doesn't seem like anybody else is having any problems. Um, this guy is saying that you can download to a, a previous uh, version of the game. Um, and that was on December 14th, so it's probably been updated, but it may not have been. But let's try another mod first to see if it's, um, if it's that. So Elmo's got most of the, the best uh, mods here. So we'll go to the Painter mod. And we'll subscribe to that one. Okay, and we'll go to the atmospheric mod, and we will unsubscribe to that, but I favorited it so I won't lose it. Okay, and we go back to the workshop. This should have reloaded, so let's remove this one. Okay, and then we will exit and reload. Okay, now unlike with the uh, atmospheric mod, we can see loaded one plugin. And if we push F3, I should have said push F3, we can see we don't have very many um, errors. I haven't looked into why these errors have come up. I don't care that much. But we can now do some network printing. And the best one for us to go on is testbed. This one has the most uh, cables and stuff. Okay. So, uh, let's get a white paint can, and we'll pop it out, Doop. and we will paint this. I think it does the whole network. There we go. That works. And we can do the whole network on this one, too. There we go. It doesn't paint the, the thing of a blobber, but that's okay. Oh, yeah, this is my... Did I update the code on this one? Yes, I did. So let's get the hell out of here. And we'll go paint a really big network. Just to have fun and see. So, 
I guess the light network is going to be the biggest one. And we want to make that one... Let's make that one orange. Oops. I don't know how to spell it. There's no orange spray? I thought there was orange. Orange. There we go. And boop. There we go. So all the way up to the top, all the way over there, all around there, probably hundreds of pieces of of uh, of uh, orange have been colored, and we can see that it's, it's orange all the way in there because this network is also attached uh, because I didn't put any separation in it. So this works perfectly fine. We'll throw these cans away. Bye. And we will exit the program because I would like to know why atmospheric isn't isn't running because I really 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 would like it and I haven't planned uh, this at all so we'll reload um, Ed Roy's uh, stationers add-on and we'll go to issues to see if there's any issues and it doesn't seem like there's very much on here to look at, but it's always good to look at the um, the issues or um, any uh, comments on the thing to see on any of these things to see if there's anyone complaining about something um, similar to yours. And you don't really have to understand this stuff. Uh, you just have to look for somebody who might be complaining about something similar to what you are. And I have actually haven't read this um, this issue yet, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, okay, this has, I don't think this has anything to do with why the atmospheric update isn't working. So, that's kind of a bummer. Uh, and, again, I didn't plan this. Um, he's actually got a message on the top here for the trading update. It fails to con uh, to compile. He thinks it should work, but uh, there might be something wrong with the namespaces. So I went down here to first look at it, and I went on the um, uh, the GitHub um, issues thing which is still a good thing to do. You still should look at that. But because my mind was fixated on that, I skipped him putting a message on the very top of the of the thing of his uh of his mod page and I do that all the time. So don't get frustrated. Stuff like this happens all the time. We unfortunately cannot use this mod. Now there's other mods that use other extensions. Stationers.addon isn't the only one. This is the one that you'd be using if you were using one of um, Elmo's uh, mods, which he has quite a few of. We'll go to the uh, Elmo's workshop here, and we'll see that he has the terraforming mod, which is quite nice. It makes your um, it makes your planet have a um, a finite space, so you can actually pollute your atmosphere. You can give it an atmosphere, like on the moon, you can give the moon an atmosphere. On Mars, you can you can get some greenhouse effect in there and warm it up. He also has a bunch of of uh, scripts. He's got five pages of stuff you can go through, and most of this stuff you can you can add into your game, like the the um, uh, the scripts don't need to have anything um, added on. That'll just show up in your in your script manager. Um, but let's look at a few other mods that may have uh, different requirements. More IC commands, I think, requires a different um, a different extension. Here we go. So this mod works. This mod only works if you have the uh, Bappin EX um, uh, 5.x um, uh, mod extension on. Now I have not actually installed this mod, and I'm not going to now. 
Uh, but this is just another extension, very much like the uh, um, the workshop one. Now, I don't know how to install this one because I haven't installed, but I can also see that it's got a pretty old uh, release on it. And some of the files have been, have been updated recently, so it may have been updated. But this is a this is just another extension that uh, some of the mods may require. Um, I would stick with the things that require the least amount of configuration um, because when you get into having to change a lot of configuration files, it increases the chance that you're going to mess something up. You're not going to cause probably probably you're not going to cause any damage to your computer or your game. So let's say that I've, you know, downloaded a bunch of mods and I've made a complete and total mess of my uh, my game and I can't play it anymore because I I've screwed it up bad. Well, just go into Stationers, uninstall, do not verify because verify will not remove um, the files. Verify will just make sure that the files that are supposed to be there for um, Stationers is there. And now we're going to give away how slow my internet is because I live out in the boonies. Now this should have cleared, should have, quote unquote, um, the Stationers directory, which it did not. Again, I haven't planned this. So make sure you get rid of all of these because version.dil will continue to load. So we'll get rid of all, everything in the stationary subdirectory to make sure that it doesn't load anything. And then we will wait. Uh, where's the time? We will wait the, oh my god, one hour and 13 minutes because I live beside, just, beside a, a sewage bog. And I actually do, that's not a joke. Uh, I can I, I can actually look out my window and right behind the line of houses, um, there is a sewage bog. That's how out in the boonies I live. It is a it is a bunch of ponds that everybody's toilet flushes into in the area. And I live in Canada. We're an environmentally friendly country. Yay! Okay, so we've downloaded and it's verifying and everything's done. Now we didn't absolutely have to uninstall, but uh, if we didn't uninstall, we would have had to have known that we had to delete um, these files. And we may not know that those are the exact files. Now we can look in the stationers um, um, add-on zip and we can see that these two files are there and if we just deleted those two files we would probably have been okay it wasn't going to uh, screw up with our game but we don't know um, if um, certain subdirectory files have changed we don't know if any of the data files were changed to allow this to work and the uh, writer of the add-on manager might say um, the the, the add-on manager doesn't change any of these protected files, but we don't know that for certain. It and some um, um, mods, some mod um, frameworks do need to do stuff like that. So it's always best to get down to your base game, delete all of the um, uh, all the files that shouldn't be in there. And it's best to wipe it out, uninstall it completely. Pick out the game, pick out the, the files that you uh, don't want, uh, or just delete everything else that's in there, and then reinstall. Now, if you've got super shitty internet, and you really, 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 really don't want to do that, save this directory. Just copy this directory somewhere else before you put in your your add-ons or your mod framework. Um, zip it up, RAR it. If you don't know how to zip or RAR it, 
just copy it somewhere else. And then when you're done playing with your mods and you want to switch back to the original version of the game, move that file, move that directory into a temporary directory so you can move back and forth easily. That's if you have something as bad as dial-up, or you have DSL that's in a super bad area and they're only giving you two megabits. Uh, my DSL provider told me that one day and I lost my mind. But, again, it's best practice. Delete everything out of this directory. Reload the game so you know that you're not going to... Um, you're not going to contaminate your your uh, base game with anything because sometimes it's hard to know um, if a mod framework is installed because it doesn't really give you too many signs. But since we've gotten rid of the framework um, and we've reloaded the little shadowy text up here that I do wish was darker, um, isn't there. And if we push uh, F3, um, there won't be any uh, text in here regarding the framework. I can't remember if there was any, but uh, we know that it's, it's gone. But if we go into Workshop, that Network Painter is still there. But it won't work. Because it needs the framework to function. There is no what's called an API call to allow some of the functions that this thing um, uses to work. And if we load testbed back up, and we get some white paint out here, and we dump the white paint, and then we spray paint this, it only gives us one, um, one cable painted. Um, now here's the point where I give you some advice. If you really don't understand what the mod's doing, and I and I don't mean understand it on a on a fundamental programming way, but I mean if you don't understand how a mod is going to change your game or is going to affect how you, how your computer is going to work, you shouldn't load it. If someone is trying to be an enormous dick, they can cause n enormous amounts of problems through a mod. Um, although I think um, uh, most programs and, and other things are walled in and um, uh, Windows has some framework that uh, will not allow um, a game or an application to um, write to portions of memory that it's not supposed to and there are some uh, walled off garden protocols in Steam that won't allow um, uh, games to write to other parts of your hard drive that it's not allowed to. All of those things are not for certain. It is possible that someone will find a workaround and will screw up your computer just because they're a dick and they want to. Not saying that it will happen, but it's always good practice to look, to make sure that the mod is being used by someone else first, that someone else has taken the first risk, that no one is doing, as no one is making a lot of complaints, and um, whoever is writing the mod is in, in a good standing in whatever uh, form they're on. Even if you are putting mods on the Nexus, Nexus mod, if you are a bad actor, Everybody's going to tell on you, and Nexus Mod is going to do something about it. The modding community is a very close-knit community, and they do not um, like people to give them a bad name because they're trying to make games better. They're trying to make your experience better. Support your mods, uh, your mod creators. Give them thumbs-ups, favorite thumbs. Tell them that you like the mod. And if they have a donation button, think about donating to them. Um, mod creators, by and large, are not allowed making money off of their mods because that gets into a whole copyright issue. But they're doing this for free, and a lot of people spend a lot of time making mods for the community. Um, there's this uh, really old game called uh, Vampire Masquerade. There's sequels out now, I think. But... 
there was one mod creator that was spending 40 hours a week um, creating basically a, an entire new world out of the game. It was it, like he put a PDA in there in the game and a bunch of other stuff. But it, it was basically a full-time job of his to take a game that he really liked that was pretty much abandoned and make it make it better. So support your mods. Support your mod creators. Give them, donate to them if you can. If you can't donate to them or you don't want to donate to them, because it's fine if you don't want to, then just give them thumbs up. Give them um, favorites. Bump them up in the community. Say, hey, this mod is great. Thanks for all your work. It goes a long way because a lot of these people are toiling away in the dark in the middle of the night when they have insomnia to try to make the game better for everybody. So please support your mod creators. I cannot stress it enough. They make terrible games better. Fallout 4 is a shit game without, um, without mod creators. And if you don't believe me that Fallout 4 is terrible without mods, play Fallout 76 and you will know how bad it could be. That's a joke, but it's also not a joke. Seriously. They make the world go round. KSP, the first Kerbal Space Program, wouldn't be um, a, a one one-hundredth of what it is today if it wasn't uh, for the mod community. And KSP2 is going, to be, is going to be dwarfed when it comes out because the original KSP, the mod community, is just going to make mods to make it exactly like KSP2. Like, there's nothing they can do about it except for try to ban mods and I'm and everybody's scared that that might happen but KSP2 is what it is today because of mods lots of games are what they are today because of mods um, uh, satisfactory wouldn't be as popular if it wasn't for the dev team helping the mod team they actually give the mod uh, the mod people what their API calls are to help them out and say why don't you try this? They don't run the the mod community, but they're they're not they they go above what they're what they have to. And that is so important for a game to be great. Anybody can make a good game or a mediocre game, but it takes the community to make it great. So again, support mod creators. Support mod creators. Uh, I know I'm beating a dead horse, but even um, Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is a really great game on its own, but mods make it spectacular. I love having a tractor. Oh, I love it.